It's me. All right, come on, Brother Andrew. Thank you. I trust everybody has a, uh, a copy of this morning's handout. If you don't, they're on the back table, right next to the entrance door. Should be plenty of copies for everybody. Uh, Revelation 16. Uh, by the way, this is not a um, informal class setting. I will. I will. Um, for we have a couple of visitors, so I'll explain why I'm uh, sitting down this morning. I'm two weeks out. I'm less than two weeks out from having uh, uh, gastric bypass surgery, so I'm uh, still. I'm still recovering from that. So I feel like I'm able to teach. I'm, I'm at a good point now where I'm able to teach, but. Um, I need to be at a point where I'm able to sit comfortably. I'm not able to stand for the full 45 minutes quite yet. Uh, trust I should be there in a couple of weeks. Uh, do continue to appreciate your prayers as I continue to recover from it. Um, but I have lost 15 pounds so far since the surgery, so I'm actually very happy about that, and I'm hoping to continue to lose some more as, uh, as, God, as God gives as, an eye, as I work hard for it. Let me adjust my mic a little bit. Uh, Revelation 16. This is water, by the way, not coffee. <laughs> Aww. 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 Um, I can, but it has to be deca uh, it has to be decaf, I think. <laughs> that's, that's they could they could have. They, in my opinion, they my in my opinion, if we would have dumped coffee into Boston Harbor instead of tea, it would have been a lot different situation. <laughs> Revelation 16, please. We'll, uh, let's pray and we'll get into our uh, lesson this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity you've given us to be in church this morning. God, I just pray that you would use this lesson to work in our hearts and in our lives in a great and mighty way to show what will happen at the end of the days when your mercy has run out. But while, you, while we're still here, while you still have mercy and long-suffering toward those who are without, God, I just pray that um, many, would, would, many would still see you and, and be born again and recognize their need of a Savior. We love you. We thank you for this lesson. We thank you for, the, uh, we thank you for your word. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going, to start reading in, uh, I'm going to start reading in verse 12 in just a few minutes. We're going to be right at the top of page 4. So you should have page 4 and page 5 in your handouts this morning. Uh, we're continuing our series on coming events. This is actually week 3. There will be one more week to this. Uh, Lord willing, that will be next week. We'll be finishing this portion up and moving on to a new, a new portion of the series. Uh, these are not my handouts, by the way. This is from a series called Bible to You. This is available online. It's a um, it's a wonderful series. I um I personally it personally comes with good recommend good high recommendations. Um, it's a series done up by the uh, by the Earlies out of Western Pennsylvania. Earlies. Yeah. The Earlies. The Early is their name. Early is their name. Yeah. The series yeah. is called Bible to You. E early like early morning. Like the time I don't want to get up early in the morning. <laughs> like if you're not 15 minutes early, you're late. Amen to that. Roman numeral three. Um, since again, since we're picking up the uh, the series kind of right in the middle of it, uh, we looked at um, we looked at the rapture. We looked at the tribulation. Those were the first two Roman numerals in this series. So now we're in Roman numeral three. Uh, this is going to be the second coming. When the seven years are complete, Jesus will come to earth once more. The return of Christ to the earth is called the second coming. Jesus Christ comes as the king. Israel will embrace Jesus as a savior at last, and a great victory will take place for them. A. But first, at the end of the seven years, the nations of the world will gather together to come against Jerusalem, the future capital of the world. The verses below will describe that battle and the events that surround it. Let's go ahead to... Um, 
Revelation chapter 16. Let's look at verses uh, 12 through 16, please. Let me follow along as I read. The Bible says, And the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to battle the, of that great day of God Almighty. Note the, note the words of Jesus in verse 15. You can know that if you have a Bible that has the words of Christ in red. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. Verse 16. And he gathered them together into a place called the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. Back to your handouts. Uh, question one. Why is the Euphrates River dried up? This is an um, informal class. You may go ahead and uh, speak the answer if you know it. The kings of the east might be prepared. Okay. They're prepared, but there's a special event that, uh, that, that really kind of fuels easier access to Jerusalem. So is, it, is it the reason why God's doing it to me, or is that the, at least the question is why is God trying up the river? Um, no, it's, it's asking why the Euphrates River is dried up. Mm -hmm. okay, so that the, so the they, armies can be dried up. Yeah. 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 Armies from the east. Well, east. Well, huh? Verse 12. Back, back in the 60s, maybe the 70s, it was actually the 70s, uh, Mao Zedong was bragging that he had an army of 200 million, and that's the number that was given in this in the scripture here. Oh, right, yes. In chapter... It's, it's, it's something that could have happened back then, but it could easily happen now as well. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, the There's more, more than enough. Mm -hmm. popu populate. The population alone of China and India is well over 2.5 billion. It's 2.8 billion. So that's closer to 3 than it is 2. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he, he, yeah, very easily, very easily enough to, to do that. 200 million is a drop in the bucket. That's that's two thirds of the population of the United States. Where's the 200 million? It's some. It's in. I know it's in scripture. It's it's in. I think it's. Is it in chapter 17? It's 200,000 thousand or something. 200,000 thousand. 200,000 thousand is the uh, the phrase used. I don't think it's in chapter 17. Um, if somebody wants to look for that, we're going to move on. Um, I want to note that the intense heat from the previous judgments of different sorts will help to dry up this uh, dry up this river, which which interesting enough it gets its source from Mount Ararat. There's a permanent ice cap on the top of Mount Ararat. Now, why is that important? Be because Noah's Ark is on the top of Mount Ararat. There's uh, handouts on the back page on the back table. Back page. You hear me? <laughs> Number two, the dragon, the false beast, and the, be the false prophet and the beast will be able to perform what? Miracles. Miracles, correct. They will get the kings of the earth and of the whole world. That's your next blanks. Those are your blanks in, in uh, number two. We're on the left-hand side of page four. They'll be able to perform miracles. They'll get the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to that battle of that great day of God Almighty. This is taken right from verse 14. Into a place called Armageddon. And that's in the Hebrew. It, it's uh, Megiddo. And while you're finishing that out, if you can flip over to Zechariah, Old Testament book of Zechariah. Armageddon means the uh, Mount of Megiddo. It's a valley, though, isn't it? There's it's a valley of Megiddo as well, but Armageddon means Armageddon Mountain. It's technically a plain, isn't it? Zechariah 14. Appreciate your input. It's going to save me from talking the whole time. Zechariah 
Zechariah 14, I'm going to start reading verse 1, we'll read down to verse 8. The Bible says, Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather all nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken. And the house is rifled, and the women ravished. And half of the city shall go forth into captivity, and the residue of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations, as when he fought in the day of battle. And his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives, which is before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst thereof toward the east and toward the west. And there shall be a very great valley. And half of the mountain shall remove it toward, move toward the north, and half, should, uh, half of it toward the south. And ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azal. Yeah, ye shall flee. Like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah, king of Judah. And the Lord my God shall come, and all the saints with thee. And it shall come to pass in that day that the light shall not be clear nor dark. But it shall be one day which shall be known to the Lord, not day nor night. But it shall come to pass that at evening time it shall be light. And it shall be in that day that living water shall go out from Jerusalem, half of them toward the former sea, and half of them toward the hinder sea. In summer and in winter shall it be. All right, question one. On the bottom, this is toward the bottom of page four, left hand side. Who ultimately ruled in getting these nations to the battle? The Lord. Yes. Um, I do not have that one. Number two, what will take place in the city of Jerusalem that, that, that day? This is a quote directly from verse 2. The city shall be taken, and the house is rifled. Go ahead and fill those out. Take a, take a, take a few seconds to run up, fill those out. By the way, the reference to the uh, 200,000 is in uh, Revelation 9.16. Revelation 9. So if you want to if you want to note that on the left-hand side, there's plenty of room. And Armageddon is 16.16. Armageddon is like right next to Galilee. Remember? It's, um, yeah, yeah we, we were there. We were in the valley there in 2016. It's, uh, let's see. Uh, Nazareth, Nazareth is on one side, and Cana, I think, is on the other side. Two opposing mountains. There's a valley that goes between, and it's approximately, I think it's, I forgot how many miles it is, but it goes all the way down to Jerusalem. <clears throat> Pretty much almost following the Jordan? No, it's, uh, it's on the Mediterranean side of the mountains. Okay. Was it near Gehenna? Gehenna is a valley, is a... Right outside Jerusalem. It's just outside Jerusalem, yes. That's where they threw the trash out. It was a perpetual burning of flame. Yeah. It's where they put the bodies that were killed of the main seven people. The houses, the city shall be taken, and the houses rifled, and the women ravished, and half the city shall go forth into captivity. Well, by the way, Napoleon said, that he, he visited, uh, what was, I guess they call it Palestine then, but he, he said, that that was the world's greatest natural battlefield, is that Valley of Megiddo. Interesting, uh, interesting note from uh, Napoleon there. Mm -hmm. It's completely flat, that's fine. Number three, uh, verse three. Then shall the Lord go forth and fight against those nations as when he fought in the day of battle. So the uh, uh, blanks are, Lord go forth, Then your second blank is fight against those nations. I give you ample room to fill it out. Mm. Number four. According to verse four, where will Jesus stand? On the bows. Yep, that's correct. That was where Judas betrayed him, I believe. And he went up to pray on the, 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 the Passover, I believe. That's where he made his big sermon regarding prophecy. That's, and yeah. That kind of the Olivet Discord. I thought his foot touches it and it splits. 
At the Lord's second coming, he wears the name King of Kings and Lord of Lords. His coming is mentioned in three different places. We'll be going through all three. So we'll start, we'll, we'll start with Matthew chapter 24. start reading verse 29. The Bible says, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. And then shall the, appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So there will be drastic changes in what three things? The sun is one of them. The moon, the moon and the stars. Yeah. Then the question. Then it finally answer the question two. Turn to Revelation chapter one. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so, amen. How many people will see him? All. 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 Every, every eye shall see him. Great special number two. Once you have that down, 2 Thessalonians 1. Verse 7, And to you who are troubled, rest with us, when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, what will the Lord Jesus bring with him? Vengeance. Vengeance, also... Angels. His mighty angels. By the way, the whole context of, of First and Second Thessalonians is that they had been deceived by people because of the tribulation they were going through then, that they thought that the second coming of the Lord had already come and they were in the great tribulation and Paul writing his most letters to reassure them that, that they weren't had they were wrong. yet. They were wrong. And there's a really important verse in chapter two of Second Thessalonians where it's talking about, and you know what withholdeth that in verse 6, that he might be revealed in his time, for the mystery of iniquity has already worked. Only he who now letteth, and I believe that's the Holy Spirit, will let and only be taken out of the way. Then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Share that reference with everybody, Second uh, Thessalonians 2. Second Thessalonians 2, that's uh, 6 through 8. Okay, if you just want to note that on the right-hand side, uh, on the right-hand side of the margin, perhaps right next to Second Thessalonians 1, 7. Note that down for your reference. It's two verses. Two verses six and eight. Well, actually, Second Thessalonians yeah, two. Yeah, goes uh, two on. It goes on up through verse ten or eleven. It goes. It goes down further, yeah. but at least verse six to start. Mm -hmm. Luke twenty-four. Uh, twenty-one. Sorry, Luke twenty-one. Did if I said twenty-four, not twenty-one. The pastor is getting me on the uh, misquoting the wrong uh, chapter. It's everybody. <laughs> start reading verse 25 down to 26 and there shall be signs in the sun uh, in the sun and in the moon and in the stars 
And upon the earth distress of nations, with perplexity the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. We'll stop there. At, what, at this point in time, what condition will people on the earth be? Perplexed, fearful. Perplexed, fearful. Distressed. Distress. The nations will be in distress. Men's hearts will be failing them for fear. Looking for peace and safety. All right, letter B. The nations are defeated, and Christ will take his rightful place as king. Join me in Ezekiel chapter 38, please. I'm going to start reading in verse 17. We'll read on down to verse 23, although the answers will be found in the middle of this section. I should try to prefer to read the whole section for context. Ezekiel 38. I'm going to start reading in verse 17 and finishing the chapter. The Bible says, Thus saith the Lord God, Art thou he of whom I have spoken in old time by my servants, the prophets of Israel, which prophesied in those days many years that I would bring thee against them? And it shall come to pass at the same time, when Gog shall come against the land of Israel, saith the Lord God, that my fury shall come up in my face. For in my jealousy and in the fire of my wrath have I spoken, surely in that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel, so that the fishes of the sea and the fowls of the heaven and the beasts of the field and all creeping things that creep upon the earth and all the men that are upon the face of the earth shall shake at my presence. And the mountains shall be thrown down, and the steep places shall fall, and every wall shall fall to the ground. And I will call for a sword against him throughout all my mountains, saith the Lord God. Every man's sword shall be against his brother. And I will plead against him with pestilence and with blood. And I will rain upon him, and upon his bands, and upon the many people that are with him, and overflowing rain and great hailstones, fire and brimstone. Thus will I magnify myself and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations, and they shall know that I am the Lord. Letter B, the nations are defeated, Christ takes his rightful place as king. Number one, Jesus defeats the enemy by what means as found in verses 19 and 20. He's going to cause what? Jealousy. Jealousy, he will, but not. But that's not the, uh, that's not the answer we're looking for. Fire. An earthquake, that's correct. Verse 19, surely in that day there shall be a great shaking in the land of Israel. He says it again, uh, middle of verse 20. This is yet a future event. Cor correct. This is, I believe, after the Battle of Gog and Magog. In Ezekiel 38, 21, God will cause them to fight who? Against their brother. Against each other. Verse 22, this is coming from right from Scripture. And I will plead against him with pestilence, P-E-S-T-I-L-E-N-C-E. -E -E. And with blood, semicolon, finishes up later in the verse. And an overflowing rain. Great hailstones, you can flip over to page five. Great hailstones, fire, and brimstone. 
I noted on the side that this is going to clear this. This will help to make God clear, to clearly make God known among the nations. Now, does it mean the nations will turn to Him? Sadly, they won't. Many of them won't. Once you have those filled out, um, join me in Revelation chapter 19. start reading in verse 17 and we'll go down to the end of the chapter. The Bible says, And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, that ye may eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast, and the kings of the earth, and their armies, gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse, and against his army. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone, and the remnant were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth, and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. Boy, I talk about a, uh, an unseemly sight. The beast and the false prophet are cast alive into what? The lake of fire. The lake of fire. We'll be reading more about the Lake of Fire as we finish up the cl uh, class this morning. If we get to that point, I think we will. All right, moving on to the Thousand Year Reign. We're already in Revelation. Go down to chapter 20 and verse 2. I'll read verse 1 just to add a little context. And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand, and he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more till the thousand years should be fulfilled. Note this last part. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. So letter A. Satan is bound how long, as told to us in verse 2? A thousand. A thousand years. Sometimes we'll refer to it as the millennia, that's the era of the millennia, millennial reign. Millennia 1000. Letter B, uh, verse 6. Same chapter of Revelation. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. On such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. So he's going to reign a thousand years with whom? Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. Let us see, the earth's going to know a thousand years of peace. Uh, join. Uh, go to Micah chapter four. It's right after Jonah. Micah chapter four. It wants us to copy the majority of verse three. So, if you want to take a couple of minutes and just find the. Uh, find the blanks that I'll read. I'll read the verse and I'll give you the blanks. And he shall judge among many people and rebuke strong nations afar off. And they shall beat their swords into plowshares 
and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up a sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. God says that nation shall be judged, the strong one shall be, will be rebuked. Quote, and they shall beat their swords into plowshares. And their spears into pruning hooks. Then you have a colon. Nation shall not lift up a sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war anymore. Give everybody a minute to finish that. If you have finished, uh, turn back to Isaiah chapter 11. Does anybody else need another minute to finish number one under letter C? Does anybody need a minute to find Isaiah chapter 11? Let's start reading in verse 6. The Bible says, The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb, and the leopard shall lie down with the kid, and the calf and the young lion and the fatling together, and a little child shall lead them. And the cow and the bear shall feed, their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. And the sucking child shall play on the hole of the asp, and the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice stem. Isaiah 11, 6 through 8 tells the effects of Christ's rule will have on the animals. It's going to be very likened to what things were in the days of creation. Um, I noted on the left-hand side that uh, Genesis chapter 1, verses 29 and 30 explain how creation originally was meant to be we're meant to be carnivores. We're, meant, we're not meant to be carnivores, sorry. We're not meant to be carnivores. We're meant to be herbivores. I believe so. Later on, we were told meat was good. Later on, we were told meat was okay. And meat's necessary. Unless, unless you're, unless you're a vegan, I, I personally have no, I personally have no problem with vegans. It's just more meat for me. <laughs> My food is a vegetarian. <laughs> That's Every a Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Where's the beef? <laughs> Straight out of my childhood. Oh. Isaiah eleven six through eight tells the effect that Christ will have on the animals. The wolf also shall dwell with the lamb. And the leopard shall lie down with the kid. Semicolon. And the calf and the young lion and the fatling together and a little child shall lead them. I put a number seven above the word and about halfway down through this just to kind of help to where the, the verse breaks are. And the cow and the bear, I can barely read my own handwriting sometimes, yes. <laughs> and the cow and the bear shall feed, semicolon. Their young ones shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox.
number eight, verse eight, and a suckling child shall play on the hole of the asp. That would be like a viper or a, perhaps another venomous creature, mm. or at least one that we would consider venomous in today's day. And the weaned child shall put his hand on the cockatrice stem. That would be another. Be cobra. Another. Is that a snake? It's a cobra. Is it a cobra? Okay. That's what it has here too. Mm. Cockatrice would be a serpent, perhaps a, a viper or an adder. Or another, again, what we would consider to, in today's day a venomous snake. We left out verse 9. It's really important for context. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, for the earth shall be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Yeah, I like that too. So add verse, if you want to just add verse 9, it, there's either there's enough room to write it down below where number two is on the left-hand side of page five, or you can just write the reference. Verse 12 shows the alignment with Jesus coming for the lost sheep of the house of the tribes of Israel. In okay. Verse 12, um, we had the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom, and they were dispersed into the nations into the north for verse 12. No, uh, letter five. We'll have just enough time. We have just enough time to go through this. The last war on Satan's stand. Back to Revelation, please. Revelation 20, this will be the last passage we'll be turning to this morning. Let's start reading verse 7. We're going to read down to verse 10, and then we'll read verses 11 through 15 in a little bit. The Bible says, And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth, and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. And the devil that deceived them was cast in the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and shall be tormented day and night forever and ever. Letter A. This is uh, under Roman numeral 5, or V, the last war in Satan's last stand. Right hand side, page 5. Question 1. When will Satan be loosed? After the thousand years. After the thousand years have expired. Number 2. Once again, he will deceive the nations and gather them to do what? Mm -hmm. Battle. Battle. Number three, they will compass the, cane of who, uh, the camp of who? The what? The saints. The saints. They will compass the saints and the beloved city. To me, it's interesting he calls the nations Gog and Magog there. Gog and Magog refers to Russia. And the, I'm wondering if maybe after the tribulation, after all these people, you know, so much of the earth is killed, that it's the people of Russia that, uh, that, are, that are the majority of the survivors. Just that's speculation on my part. But. It is, yeah, it, yeah it, it, it is speculation. There's a lot, there's a lot deeper than, than what Scripture gives us mm -hmm. as far as what Gog and Magog completely entail. There's a whole different, there's many different books out there. Some that are good, some that are not good. Mm -hmm. Two, we're good. <laughs> okay. Oh, brother. Okay. <laughs> uh, uh, number four. What will come down out of heaven? Fire. Fire. Fire and brimstone. Who sent it? God. God did. And what did it, and what did this fire do? Devour the right. adversaries. All right, got to move kind of quick here. We got a couple minutes left. Five. What will God do to Satan? He's going to cast him in the lake of fire. That's also where the beast and the false prophet are. And how long will Satan be there? Forever, Forever and ever. Letter B. Let's read. Uh, let's read verses eleven through fifteen real quick. Same chapter. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth and the heaven fled away, and there was found no place for them. 
And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them, and they were judged every man according to their works. And death and hell were cast in the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. That's when the unsaved are raised to be judged. And that would be from all time. What happens to the unsaved and to death and hell? Cast into the lake of fire. And everything, everybody that is judged and cast into the lake of fire. At the end of it all, we get to the new heaven and the new earth next week. And that's how we'll finish up our study. Um, certainly, I think the biggest takeaway from... There are two big things we can take away from today's lessons. Judgment is coming. Mm -hmm. Judgment is coming for this world. We don't know how much longer God's going to give us to tell the world that they need a savior. Let's go share let's go share the gospel with the lost and dying world. Number two, the second the second point I'd like to bring up is one day sin will be eradicated. This here is the eradication of sin. The, at, the, at the end of when every when death and hell and the and the unsaved are finally cast, that will be the end of sin as we know it. Mm -hmm. can't wait for that day. I'm sure many of you can't either, but we need to, uh, let's get as many people out of here with us. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity you've given us to look at coming events. We thank you for your word and for, the glo and for your glorious gospel. That Thank you for sending your son to die for us. And I just pray that um, in, the morning, in the morning service we would learn, for, learn from your word, work in our hearts and our lives, and help us to bring lost souls to Christ. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm -hmm. Your dismissed service will begin in about 15 minutes. How are you feeling? Yeah? Not bad, actually. Not the hard thing. Yeah, I pay, uh, probably between a two and a three. I'm not even, I'm not even, I haven't needed Tylenol in a couple of days, so pretty thankful for that. And you have to avoid NSAIDs, right? After I can't, yeah, I can't, no, no NSAIDs, no, no NSAIDs. Mm -hmm.